Hi and welcome to Sound Design for Beginners. You don't really need expensive tools or plugins to create great and awesome sounds. With this video I hope to inspire you that uh, most of the time the tools and plugins of your door is uh, well enough. So today we're going to sample a lamp spring and turn it into this sound. Okay, so let's break down how to create this uh, wonderful pad sound from this initial uh, spring sample. To capture my samples, I often use something like the H4N handy recorder. Or I might use uh, a microphone like the Baby Blue Bottle SL and record straight into the door. But this, in this case I was using the H4N handheld recorder. So now we need some kind of sampler to play back this uh, sample to further process it and, and create our instrument. And if you're lucky to have a bit big studio, you can just uh, load up the basic uh, sampler that comes with, with the DAW. And then we can drag our sample right into the sampler. And we will have the sample instantly available to play across the keyboard. Right, so this is the traditional uh, sample playback style, which is called the repitch mode in, uh, in Bitwig. And uh, this is the repitch mode. And the problem with traditional sample playback is that the note values uh, will affect pitch and the timing as we progress up uh, on the keyboard. Right, so as you can see with the traditional sample playback engine, the pitch and the timing will be affected by the note value. So if we progress up the keyboard like this, you note that the timing is different depending on the keys that we press. So uh, it makes the sound a little bit weird when you get uh, higher up the range or lower down the range on the keyboard. So what's the solution? The solution is to use another playback engine. And if you're lucky to have a Bitwig Studio, we can select uh, the Cycles playback mode. And basically it uses the cycles of the source as a wavetable, so you basically create an oscillator. But initially when you select the Cycles mode, the speed will be set to 100%. So if we now play back our sample, you can see that the timing is the same even though we play quite high up in uh, on the keyboard. But uh, the sound starts to sound a little bit strange when you get quite high. It sounds a little bit broken apart. And that's uh, because uh, the cycles playback mode needs to loop certain points of the cycles in order to maintain that same timing depending on the keys that you press. So how can we defeat this second problem? Well, we can decrease the speed of our cycles playback engine. We can set it to zero, like this. So now we have basically created an oscillator from our original sample material. And it sounds a little bit static, so one way to create uh, movement in the sound is to use the formant control here. It sounds quite drastic uh, when you make big changes to this form and control. But uh, what we could do is add a modulator to slowly change the formant of, uh, of the playback mode. So let's add a, a classic LFO and attach the source to target the formant. It's still a little bit too drastic, so let's uh, drag down the amount a little bit here. You can actually see the LFO move the, the target here. And also decrease the hertz, the ratio, uh, the rate, sorry. Mm -hmm. 
So now we have a little bit of movement in the sound, but it still uh, sounds a little bit weird. And now we can walk through the sample here with the starting offset and uh, find uh, a wave cycle that you like. So let's experiment a little bit with the sample start offset here. You can see that uh, the closer we are to the actual transient of that uh, spring sample, we get uh, a more harsh sound. So if you need a softer sound, you can of course go further into the sample like this. So let's go back a little bit so we get a little bit more of the actual high end from the sound. Now we can start to experiment with the filter, so maybe add a low pass filter here. We can actually add an EQ here, an EQ5 or the EQ+, plus, so we can more precisely see how the waveform behaves. So we get rid of a little bit of the high end, maybe add a high pass filter here also, so we get rid of the low end. Now if we want to create a more of a pad sound from this. It still has a little bit of attack. We can go ahead and uh, introduce a little bit of slower attack on the AHDSR here. So drag it to around 200 and introduce more release too. Maybe also add an AHDSR to the modulators here and attach that to the format. So we also get a little bit of uh, movement, more movement in, in the format. Now for the icing on the cake we can add a little bit of, uh, or a lot of reverb at the end of this chain. So we again go ahead and add the Valhalla Supermassive. This is a free uh, delay slash reverb plugin from Valhalla DSP. I highly recommend that you go and download this plugin because it's, uh, it sounds magical. Introduce a little bit of feedback, a little bit of density. Maybe a little bit of cutoff here. To give some more performance ability to this instrument, we can add another modulator, like maybe attach the MIDI aftertouch, uh, the pressure of our keyboard to affect uh, some parameter, maybe affect the filter a little bit, and also the pitch slice slightly, or attach it to an LFO so that uh, we can give a little bit of vibrato to, to the sound. So we take an LFO here and attach that to the pitch, just a little bit. It needs to go a little bit faster, so introduce uh, more rate here. Now the trick here is to drag back the amount and attach uh, our pressure modulator to affect uh, the amount of the LFO. So now as soon as I press down a key a little bit harder, so we reach the aftertouch on the, on the keyboard, you can see that uh, we introduce uh, the, the rate or the, the mix in of the LFO here, which adds vibrato. So now we have a more expressive instrument at our fingertips. What I also like to do is attach uh, one of the knobs on my controller to uh, the wetness of, uh, of the reverb. And it's easily done by pressing this uh, toggle mappings browser panel. Now we have some boxes in our interface so we can uh, attach, uh, maybe press this uh, mix button, then we move a fader on our controller. And now we have effectively attached uh, 
uh, my knob here on the controller to control the mix of the reverb. So now we can close down the mapping panel. Right, so that's how you uh, create a pad sound from a very simple uh, wave file, like uh, a spring from a lamp. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you don't have Bitwig Studio, you can always use my affiliate link and a 10% discount code, which is in the video description. Now you can continue and watch my next episode. My name is Matas, and see you in the next episode. Bye.